The Santa Cruz Chamber Link Road, shortened to SCLR, is a 6.45 km long miles arterial road in Mumbai, connecting the Western Express Highway in Santa Cruz with the Eastern Express Highway in Chamber. It contains the city's first and India's second double-decker flyover. The six-lane road was constructed as part of the World Bank-funded Mumbai Urban Transport Project MUTP at a cost of 454 crore rupees $63 million. The World Bank withdrew funding midway through the project due to repeated delays, and the second phase was financed by the Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority MMRDA with its own funds. The SCLR was severely delayed, taking more than 11 years for the work to be completed. Groundwork for the road, originally slated to start in 2003, did not get underway until 2007. The project missed 12 deadlines since the original deadline of November 2004. The SCLR was termed an engineering marvel by the National Geographic Society, and was described by the World Bank as the world's most delayed road project. A portion of the SCLR, the 560 m Kurla Kalina flyover over LBS Marg, was opened to the public on 10 August 2012. The SCLR was opened to the public on 18 April 2014. History Background Wilbur Smith and Associates were commissioned in 1962 to study and make recommendations on transportation issues in Greater Mumbai, was commissioned to in mid-1962. Their report, filed with the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways on 19 December 1963, proposed the construction of several link roads to improve east-west connectivity in the city. Among the projects proposed was a four-lane road linking Santa Cruz in the west with Chember in the east. The Mumbai Urban Transport Project (MUTP) was initiated in 2002 to study and propose solutions to Mumbai's transportation issues. The SCLR, along with the widening and improvement of the Jogeshwari Vikroli Link Road (JVLR), was one of two east-west road corridor projects implemented under the first phase of the MUTP, and were intended to ease commutation problems and act as links between Mumbai's eastern and western suburbs. Prior to the SCLR's opening, commuters traveling from the western suburbs towards the eastern suburbs or Navi Mumbai had to take the JVLR, the Andheri Kurla Road, or a detour from Sion to reach Chembur. During peak hours, this would take 90 minutes to 2 hours. After the SCLR opened, travel time between Santa Cruz and Chember reduced to 17 minutes. The SCLR is an important arterial road connecting the Western and Eastern Express highways. The SCLR is expected to significantly decongest the EEH and the WEH, and ease traffic congestion at the Amar Mahal Junction, Vakola, Kalanagar Junction, Sion and Kurla. It will also decrease traffic congestion on roads in Santa Cruz, Kalanagar, Dharavi, Sion and Chember. The Times of India reported that commuters can save 50 rupees minus 60 on auto rickshaw and taxi fares at April 2014 rates when traveling between the eastern and western suburbs via the SCLR. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Land acquisition and rehabilitation. Government land measuring 10,705.51 square metres belonging to the MHADA, the BMC, the railways, and the Kurla Dairy, was transferred for use in the project. However, additional acquisition of private land was necessary to implement the project, and approximately 1,091.90 square metres of private land was acquired for the same. The total land required for phase two of the project for up to 45.7 metres width of row was 1, 34,358 square m out of which the 88,200 sqm of the land for the existing 30 meters width of row was acquired by the Public Works Department PWD and handed over to the BMC. Between 30 to 45.7 meters width of row, 46,158 sqm land was required, of which, about 5,596 sqm of land was in the possession of the BMC 2047 sqm, and the government 3,549 square m. Land acquisition for the SCLR project was carried out by the BMC. 
As a result of Phase II of the project, a total 434 structures were affected out of which 235 were residential, 193 commercial and 6 residential cum commercial. In addition to this there were five other structures affected which consisted of one balwadi, one newspaper library, one post office, a structure on private land, and one bank. A total of 3,167 structures would be impacted. 2,575 residential, 540 commercial, 33 residential cum commercial, and 19 community, religious structures. As of 30 April 2006, a total of 2,591 structures had been resettled—2,418 residential, 145 commercial, 26 residential cum commercial, and two religious, community structures. People impacted by the project were resettled at a resettlement site in Mankard, which is about 7 km from the location of affected structures at SCLR Phase 2. The Mankard resettlement site had a total of 3,256 residential tenements and 720 commercial tenements. Topic: Construction. The SCLR was commissioned in 2003 under the World Bank-funded MUTP, and was originally scheduled to be completed by November 2004. The SCLR and JVLR projects were initially entrusted to the Public Works Department (PWD). Responsibility for the project was later transferred to the Maharashtra State Road Development Corporation MSRDC, and the Mumbai Metropolitan Region Development Authority MMRDA was appointed as the nodal agency. The SCLR project was implemented in two phases. The first phase was executed by the MSRDC and the second phase was executed by the Brihanmumbai Municipal Corporation BMC. Phase 1 comprises the 3.45 km long miles section from the east end of the six-lane Mithi River Bridge up to the Amar Mahal junction of the Eastern Express Highway. Phase 2 consists of the 3 km section from the WEH to the Mithi River. Phase 1 was funded by the World Bank, while Phase 2 was financed by the MMRDA with its own funds. Section 1 and 2 were contracted to Patel Engineering Limited and Gammon India Limited respectively. The Lewis Berger Group Inc. served as project management consultants for both sections. The contract for civil work for Section 1, signed on 29 September 2003, had a value of 33.81 crore rupees $7.514 million. .Construction of the SCLR was contracted to Patel Engineering Limited and Gammon India Limited for 35 crore rupees and 79.9 crore rupees respectively. Gammon was awarded nearly 75% of the total civil work on the project. The Lewis Berger Group Inc. served as project management consultants. The notices to proceed with work or work orders for Section 1 and 2 were issued on 29 September 2003 and 10 May 2004. However, the project was severely delayed. The MMRDA later hiked the values of both contracts by 15% to keep up with cost escalation caused by delays. Patel Engineering briefly halted construction on the project for several months in 2011, asking for another hike in contract value. The MMRDA agreed to hike both contract values by 30 to 35 percent, and Patel Engineering resumed work in January 2012. As of April 2011, Gammon had already spent 113.1 crore rupees, and Lewis Berger had reportedly spent nearly five times the original amount. Other work In September 2013, the MMRDA invited agencies to prepare a detailed project report for three proposed bridges. The first flyover is planned from Bandra Kurla Link Road to CST Junction in Kurla, and the second will be from Mumbai University Junction in Kalina to CST Road. The third DPR concerns the remodeling of the existing CST bridge. After remodeling, the 40 meter long 130 feet and 30 meters wide bridge would be 100 meters long and will 45 meters wide. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Delay Although, the groundwork for the link road was originally planned to commence in September 2003, it began only in 2007. The SCLR was severely delayed, taking more than 11 years for the work to be completed. 
The project missed 12 deadlines since the original deadline of November 2004. Following this, 11 other deadlines have been fixed and missed for the project, September 2006 – December 2008, December 2009 – June 2010, June and December 2011 – December 2012, March 2013 – October 2013, December 2013 and 31 March 2014. The cost of constructing the SCLR was originally estimated as 114.96 crore rupees in 2003. This was revised to 254.76 crore rupees in August 2011. According to the reply from the MMRDA to a right to information RTI request filed by RTI activist Anil Galgali, the latest estimated project cost is 454 crore rupees, 63 million dollars, an escalation of 391.30%. Thousands of displaced residents had to be relocated, leading to delays. The World Bank initially provided loans to the project, but later withdrew. Roberto Zaga, India head of the World Bank, called it the world's most delayed road project. An MMRDA official defended the delay in the project stating, It was huge project. We had to resettle more than 3,500 project-affected people. There were also issues will relocation of a religious structure, and a politician's interference, too, did not help. It is easy to lay the blame, but the work was challenging. We also had to face several court cases. We have learned many lessons from this project. A major delay occurred in getting clearance from Central Railway CR to construct a 50.9 meters bridge over the Central Line. Despite receiving the request in 2007, CR took five years and asked for four changes in design before finally approving construction in July 2012. The approval came with the rider that MMRDA could only start construction in October 2012, after the monsoon. A railway official defended CR stating, MMRDA blamed us for the delay. But the design of the road overbridge across the tracks was such that it would not have got the Commissioner of Railway Safety's approval. The consultants should have thought about this long ago. We had also given blanket approval to launch girders more than a year ago. But the girder launching work was carried out six months ago as they did not arrive from Punjab at the site, where, too, no preparations were made. The MMRDA also faced challenges launching the 14 girders, each weighing 140 ton, as they could only carry out work for three hours at night to avoid affecting rail traffic. All girders were launched in 21 days. According to Jitendra Gupta of the Citizens' Transport Committee, there is no accountability and coordination among the government agencies involved. We had met the railway chief engineer in charge of the project around four years ago and were told that he had 200 proposals like the SCLR to examine because of his wide jurisdiction. He said he couldn't make an exception for the SCLR and speed up clearances. <laughs> <laughs> Opening A portion of the SCLR, the 560 m Kurla Kalina flyover over LBS Marg, was opened to the public on 10 August 2012, according to the reply from the MMRDA on 24 March 2014 to an RTI request filed by RTI activist Anil Galgali. Construction work on the SCLR was complete on the sections from the Mithi River to Ghazinagar, Kurla w, and from Ghazinagar, Kurla w, to Rahul Nagar, Tilak Nagar. However, the section from Rahul Nagar to Eastern Express Highway via Amar Mahal flyover was incomplete. MMRDA Executive Engineer M.A. Wani noted that part of the delay was caused by a change in the specification for a girder from concrete to steel. The decision was approved by Executive Committee of MMRDA in its meeting held on of January 2012. The MMRDA issued a press note on 13 April stating that the SCLR was complete. Bitumen work was pending at the chamber end, apart from which streetlights had also not been installed on the entire length of road. The approach road to the landing at Nehru Nagar had also not been completed, and road medians were still being placed at the chamber end. The opposition alleged that the project saw delays due to the government's inefficiency and was being opened ahead of elections as a pre-poll stunt. Mumbai Bharatiya Janata Party President Ashish Scheller wrote a letter to the Election Commission on 14 April, calling the SCLR opening a publicity stunt. 
and opposing the inauguration stating that the Congress party would reap undue credit for it. RTI activist G.R. Vora and Action for Good Governance and Networking in India activist Shyama Kulkarni both questioned why the opening took place so close to the election. The media reported that some motorists used the SCLR on 15 April, even though it had not been officially open. DNA reported that the traffic on the road was mostly bikers and private cars. The SCLR was inaugurated by MMRDA officials at 8.15 am IST on 18 April 2014. Unlike most projects in India, the SCLR was opened without fanfare, and no politicians were present at the opening, as the Code of Conduct for the 2014 general elections was in force at the time. Traffic was sparse on opening day, which officials believe was because it was a public holiday due to Good Friday. Inadequate signage meant some motorists had to ask for directions. MMRDA officials installed additional signboards by the 21st of April, but they failed to improve the situation because they were too small. According to then DCP Traffic Pratap Diavkar, about 22,000 vehicles used the SCLR on opening day. Traffic remained skeletal on the second day as well. More than 50,000 vehicles used the road on the third day. Increased traffic caused jams on the third day, mainly due to a Congress election rally at BKC. On 28 April, a Monday, the first working day since the road opened, an estimated 55,000 to 60,000 vehicles travelled on the SCLR. Heavy congestion was reported on certain stretches of the road, particularly on Hans Bugra and Mohammad Raza Road junctions in Santa Cruz e. Mumbai traffic police officers stated that Mohammad Raza Road needs to be widened as it is a main feeder to SCLR, Joint Commissioner of Traffic BK. Upadhyay noted that the MMRDA had failed to complete widening of feeder routes before completion of the project. The Citizen Transport Forum carried out an audit of the SCLR on the third day after opening, and identified seven major bottlenecks along the road. Upadhyay told the Mumbai Mirror on 29 April that these issues could be fixed by widening the roads and installing traffic lights. However, he noted that an eighth problem, at Mohammad Raza Chowk, where traffic from BKC Road and the SCLR merge, accounted for 90% of the jams. He felt that the situation could be improved by installing traffic signals at the junction, but even that would not resolve the entire problem. Best began operating buses on the SCLR for the first time from 2 May 2014. <laughs> Route description The SCLR is 6.45 km long and 45.7 m wide. The SCLR has three flyovers, CST Road flyover, the main flyover spanning a total length of 3.45 km, the 560 m Kurla Kalina flyover above LBS Marg, and the double-decker flyover combined length of 1.8 km crossing over the Central and Harbour Line tracks at Tilak Nagar. The SCLR also has two arms, one for Lokmania Tilak Terminus and the other one for Kurla Dairy. The 1,096-metre-long Amar Mahal Junction flyover connects the SCLR with the EEH. The flyover is 17 metres wide. The S-shaped steel girder is 92 metres long and 8.5 metres in width, and its actual cost is 59 rupees and 51 paise minus 76.41 crore. Access to the road is available from CST Road, Amar Mahal Junction, Nehru Nagar and Lokmanya Tilak Terminus. There are a total of six seven signals on the entire road, which were installed based on the suggestions of the Mumbai Traffic Police. See also Jogeshwari Vikroli Link Road